after the full moon picture in Leo of the Toll of Worm, the moon will enter into Virgo and pass the star Zavi Chava, the gloriously beautiful, at exactly 1044. Venus, on March 8th, will traverse, perhaps cut free, the band of the horizontal fish, the representation of the trodden down, the send out disciples with little strength of their own. March 9th, the moon will pass the star Zanaya, and that star has been uh, integrated into the ground plan of Washington. And that ground plan is designed to commemorate both the birth and the plotted demise of the nation from the Masonic perspective. You can read more about that over here. March 9th, Mercury will be in the center of the water flow of Aquarius. We're going to see that later. Venus will align with the Delta star in the fish on March 9th as well. The wishing well or football cluster in Argo Navis, the arc, will be at the highest point, perhaps associated with a fiery kickoff. March 11th, the E3 comet will be in the center of the river Eridanus, typing fiery judgment over there, while Mars is placed between the horns of Taurus, the bull. At the stars uh, Alnat with Origa and the Heavenly Palace, denoting um, the tribe uh, tribes of Ephraim and Manasseh, the sons of Joseph, and the constellation as a whole denotes the Lord coming down as a rushing and a pushing bull to both rescue but also judge his enemies. March 11th, Venus will align with the minor planet Eris. We're going to see how that is reflected in the iPad Goat animation as well. The king planet Jupiter, Revelation 12 man-child from March 11th to the 13th, will be flanked by asteroid Vesta and align with that door star, the delta star in the constellation Pisces, delta PCM. The uh, age of the man-child is now five and a half years old, and you can read over here how Abraham poured or gave a great feast when his son, Isaac, was weaned. And that didn't mean that the child stopped, stopped breastfeeding, but that he, sh he or she showed signs of independence, which could happen in between three to nine years. So the age of the current Revelation 12 man-child falls with, 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 um, in between these brackets. So the great feast of Abraham um, serves as a beautiful reminder to us. And it was accustomed in uh, Hebrew culture that when a child was weaned, they would once again look at its name. And sometimes the child received a new name, more fitting to its displayed nature. So that uh, alludes forward to the transformation of the bride and us being transferred from the spiritual care of the Heavenly Mother Jerusalem uh, in the book of Galatians to the Father, the introduction into the priesthood of Melchizedek for the first fruits, the overcomers in Christ. Forerunner and groomsman Mercury will become very difficult to see as it, as it approaches the sun and departs from the sun um, prior to and after its conjunction with the sun on the 17th. So it will fulfill the role of a thief because in a Roman pantheon, the groomsman and forerunner is seen as the patron of thieves. The moon will align with first the hard star of the scorpion and then with the sickle stars. Venus will cut the upright fish ribbon in Pisces. So the verses and the chapters of the book of John, I think it's chapter 6 and 20, uh, 21 of the storm at the Sea of Galilee and then the great catch. The transference from sea to land and seeing the Lord as a beacon of light, either on the sea or on the shore. Um, all uh, pictures of our redemption drawing near. John seeing the Lord in the throne room of Revelation 4.1 with his hair as white as wool, resonating with the constellation Aries with 
the lamb as the type of the white hair as well. The last quarter moon typing division, the March equilux, the day of equal parts in the book of Enoch, John 11, 9, uh, refers to the Lord speaking of the day of 12 hours of daylight and 12 hours of nighttime. It precedes the spring equinox. So the difference between the equilux and the equinox is explained over here. It is the opening of the summer doors, the ending of winter, the Lord as a bridegroom coming out of his winter palace and um, coming out of his chamber. So summer is then nigh even at the doors. The conjunction with Neptune um, on March 16th, uh, conjunction of the sun and Neptune, the trident beast of the sea, the proposed first beast, I believe to be Obama, part of the unholy trinity. And the nation of Ukraine also flagging the trident. So the conflict in the Ukraine described in the scriptures and as the battle in the valley of Jehoshaphat, a second fulfillment that uh, both uh, that conflict and the trident uh, is associated with Neptune, with the first beast. Then the coming together of the planet Mercury and the solar bridegroom, just like at the baptism, John the Baptist and Jesus, John decreasing as Jesus was increasing, the sun of righteousness arising with healing because the attribute of, of Mercury biblically is also that of healing. And the uh, groomsman no longer speaking warnings and awakening to the bride because he is about to disappear off the scene. So this is what we are looking at, the fading appearance and the softening voice of the groomsman. And I believe it's because the groom himself is coming. Here we go. Let's take a look at the visuals. The midnight marker tonight and tomorrow. So the comet C2017 K2 pen stars will align with the pendulum of the pendulum clock exactly at the midnight or noon marker. And there's an article linked in the text with regard to this particular comet. And um, I would recommend for you to take a look at that to see what the underlying prophetic meaning is, because it's a very rich picture that they draw of this comet. Of course, the midnight marker, the call of the groomsman that the bridegroom is coming, but it also, it also foreshadows darkness to fall. Jupiter will align with Vesta, with Delta Piscium, the door of the fish, on the 6th. The moon will be at the feet of Leo, the full worm moon, on the Alpha and Omega point on the ecliptic between the nebula and the new chapter on the ecliptic in Virgo. Sirius, the asteroid denoting Jesus as a grain offering, is in the constellation where the mother and the man-child are hidden. The moon at the nebula, alpha and omega point, then on to onwards to Zavi Java, the star denoting the gloriously beautiful. The next um, Zavi Java still, and it's aligned with crater, the cup of wrath to be poured out on the serpent below. Venus will traverse the band of the horizontal fish on the 8th and then will arise above the ecliptic. This is where the arising above the waters takes place for Venus. And the exit of the waters is at the line of the vertical fish. Then she will enter into the throne room. That will come a little bit later. The moon at Zanaya. The star uh, designed into the ground plan of Washington, the 144 degree angle exactly. So 144 is rich prophetically. Mercury in the center of the water stream floating into the mouth of the southern fish, formal associated with the, it's called the Star of Annunciation. 
that was the star that was marked for the announcement by Gabriel to Mary that she would become pregnant with the Lord. And the sudden fish is, is uh, assigned to the sign of Jonah. The alignment with the door star in the fish of King Planet, Vesta, the virgins. So we have this alignment again with the door star on the ninth. The wishing well or football cluster in the arc at culmination. The moon is furthest removed from the sun on the 10th. Then um, if we look at the backdrop constellation, we see the upper body portion of Virgo. And this star denotes that boundary and thus the birth of the moon from the upper body at the star Spica, the first roots in the left hand of Virgo, the branch, capital B, uh, Zedek, the ruler, the first roots that are, are going to be snatched up. So the alignment of Spica and the moon further to the north is with the alpha star in Bodhis called Acturus. And that points to uh, the sons of light, the sons and daughters of light. Mars is in between the horns of the bull, El Nath, the wounded, Zeta Tauri in the south, in an area called the Celestial Silver Gate. Zeta Tauri, associated with the two tribes, the sons of Joseph, Ephraim and Manasseh, Jupiter, Vesta, and the door in Pisces. This alignment will be from... Um, the 11th until the 13th. So we have the door of the fish, the man-child, and the maidens, Vesta, um, in alignment as seen from the ecliptic over here. And then Venus will be aligned with the asteroid Ares, the apple of discord in the Greek pantheon. Uh, situated in the constellation Cetus, which has its four feet or legs in the river Eridanus. So this is the beast that is going to be subdued by the son of man, the constellation Orion. And then the traversing of the upright fish's ribbon, the planet Venus the Beloved at the star Elrisha in the south, in the north, it's going to align with the star Kapf, which means the branch in Cassiopeia, which is the ruling branch. So at the moment of this traversing, the alignment will be with the wedding knot star in the south and the ruling branch in the north. And this is where Venus will traverse from the celestial sea section onto dry land, reminiscent of the throne room scene in Revelation 4.1. The last quarter moon typing division, the entry into the throne room of Venus, the meteors brought forth from the Norma constellation, the um, square of the carpenter underneath the constellation Scorpio. So this is where Norma is situated. Neptune at solar conjunction on the 16th and the nearness of Mercury. The conjunction of the Sun uh, with Neptune one day later on the 17th, Mercury will conjoin as well. On the 16th, the Moon will reach the end of the believer's race in the heavens in the constellation Sagittarius, the archer. And the crown, the victory crown, is laid up underneath the archer. So 3, 16 and 17 really resonate with the verses from John 3. 16 and 17. So this is where the moon passes the brightest star in Sagittarius, Nunki, where the arm is stretched forth with the Lord's end times harvesters, his arrows in his quiver, the children of the Lord. So I'm going to um, pass the reference of the Bethlehem stars to Purim, the two Bethlehem stars pointing to Purim as well in between 2015 and 17. The fiery destroyer still approaching, the enemy being all fired up, the hidden references to fire being brought to the nation of the U.S. To now end uh, this second video with the bridal almond tree, the menorah 
being on fire and showing the first tender fruits of the year.